Hi, and welcome to another episode of Faith and Freedom. I am Garrett. I am Christian, Libertarian, and I am just back from a vacation to Michigan, and I'm still getting settled back into my normal routine. And there is so much I could potentially talk about going on right now. Uh, we got the Kyle Rittenhouse jury deliberation. Um, we will see what happens with that. I think it'll be interesting. So here's my prediction up front. Uh, and this will probably get released after uh, whatever happens. Um, my prediction is if he is found uh, guilty, the um, the right generally and his supporters will be upset, but they will vent mostly on or, or almost entirely on their keyboards. If Rittenhouse is found not guilty and acquitted, the left will lose their minds and there will be physical property damage and probably violence in the streets. So I'm just putting that out there now. We'll see what happens. I'm hoping that, uh, well, I am trusting that God's will will be done and that justice will be served. So there's that. I'm not going to talk about that. I'm not really going to talk about my vacation, although I had a wonderful experience. I got to worship at a reformed um, Coit Community Church in uh, Grand Rapids, and I got to worship last Sunday at Holy or um, Our Redeemer uh, PCA Presbyterian Church in Detroit, and that was wonderful, and it was a refreshing vacation. While I was on my vacation, I got to do some reading in the book that me and my pastor are reading together, Carl Truman's book, uh, The Rise and Triumph of the Modern Self. And it is absolutely amazing. It's a little bit, um, it's it's not a happy book because it's kind of a uh, an explanation of how we got to today's modern society where it's basically a postmodern um, choose your own adventure, choose your own gender, choose your own whatever you want to worship, your truth is your truth type of disaster. But he takes it all the way back to uh, the Romantic era, um, to Hegel, uh, to some other Romantic philosophers, and all the way up through uh, the late 1800s, early 1900s. And he sort of ties together the um, ideas of Nietzsche, Marx, and Freud, who weren't all necessarily uh, uh, allies. You know, they, they, they had competing ideas. But they also had some what we'll call uh, intersectionalities. And it was just an odd uh, sequence of events where I was reading that book and I was checking my Facebook feed and one of my um, libertarian friends posted on there, you know, kind of a funny meme, uh, college whiteboard, Nietzsche, God is dead, God, Nietzsche is dead. And that was that was the that was the meme, and I laugh reacted to that, and then I felt compelled to comment, and I said, "Don't you think it's sort of odd how a lot of communist or atheist communists end up either lunatic or and or suicidal? Because because Nietzsche lost his mind at the end. I, I'm not a Nietzsche expert, and that's sort of where this is going, but I know that he was not right <laughs> at the end. He totally lost it. And you have others like Jean-Paul Sartre, who was an existentialist, atheist, sort of a, kind of along the lines of Nietzsche. Like I said, I'm not that familiar, um, but the whole way through his life, you know, he sort of preached, you know, I think therefore I am and all there is is this existence and this life and whatever is in my brain is sort of uh, my idea in, in, in my truth or whatever, sort of like a postmodern um, grandfather. But at the end, uh, Sartre got um, a, a, little, a little antsy. Uh, he, uh, according to, um, and, I, and I haven't cross-referenced this, but there is a reference on Wikipedia that some letters that um, a person who was with Jean-Paul Sartre at the end said that he got very spiritual and very like Judeo-Christian and realized it, it almost sounded um, uh, a, a mix of, of Judaism and Calvinism. Like he thought that he had he had a purpose. It, it was a total opposite of what he he preached, um, you know, during his life, which I, I think is interesting because it's easy to be an existentialist and an atheist when everything's going good for you. You're you're young and healthy. 
But when the rubber hits the road and you get diagnosed with stage four brain cancer or um, pulmonary embolism, like John Paul Sartre had, because he smoked himself pretty much to death, uh, when you start facing death in the eye, that, that changes your philosophy drastically, I would think. And, and I know I've talked about this before, but I think that's kind of what's um, sort of standing in the way of revival in America is that we're a little too cushy, we're a little too comfortable, and we don't have that clear view of, of how, how perishable we are. So anyway, um, my comment on my friend's post uh, spurred some other comments, and, and I'm not sure who these folks were. I think they were some of the more um, a- atheist uh, libertarians, and one, like I checked out his profile, you know when someone counter comments you, of course you're going to go check out their profile and see what they're up to, right? Well, I looked down like his his uh, his, his his favorite books or whatever, and he's like a Nietzsche fanatic, and he's, how dare you call Nietzsche a communist? Uh, or, you know, how, how, you know, dare you make this connection? I said, hey, you know, you got to read this book, and I know he's never going to read it because um, it, it's you know, a a Christian publisher. Uh, But I I tried to make the same connection. I said, look, if, if, if you're pushing atheism, you are by default aiding and abetting the, the, the communist bent that is, that is raising its ugly head in this country and in other countries. History shows it like the primary goal of, of, of communists when they're trying to get control of a country is to kill God essentially what what Nietzsche was was preaching if they can get God out of the way the only things that you have left to to prioritize is either yourself or the state and they want complete control and uh you know other people jumped in and they're like well you know look at how much um death and war has been uh fought over over religion and I said well you know look at communist countries it's not that they're fighting over religion communist countries are trying to suppress any religion that people elevate above their loyalty to the state and i said what is the official official religion of north korea i didn't get a response to that because there isn't it's 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 the state and 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 that was the point that i tried to make I, i went i did go back and i said you know what i'll change i'll change my comment I won't say communist atheist, I'll say communists and atheists. That way I'm not linking um, this gentleman's hero of Nietzsche directly to communists, but I said I stand by my point. Um, whether you call yourself a communist or not, if you're saying things like God is dead, or if you're, you're, um, I guess we'll call it a militant atheist, right? So there's, there's, Atheists like this, this, this guy that's on there in Nietzsche, and there's ones that are kind of like George Will, right? Like he, he really doesn't make a big, big stink about it. But it, you know, I said I stand, I stand by my comment. Like if if you're um, devaluing a, a, a creator, and I said everyone worships some someone or something, right? And that's that's either going to be um, another person, a false god, the the creator that that we worship, or yourself, and this gets back to um, Romans one. If if you are worshiping anything other than than Yahweh, the God of the Bible, the the omnipotent, all knowing, um, creative, controlling force in this universe. You are worship, worshiping something that's created other than the creator, right? Whether that's something that's created in your own mind or carved out of wood or you're worshiping the sun or you're worshiping the moon, um, it, it, it's something else. And if it's not a true, ever-living, um, provable God that sent his one and only son to, to die for our sins, to rectify our relationship to him, uh, it, it's going to fall apart. Everything else is sinking sand. Mm. And it, if you go that extra step and say there isn't anything, um, I'm not saying that's any worse 
I guess, in terms of like your your eternal fate, but in terms of what you are um, promoting and what you are advancing here on this earth, and especially um, in this day and age, you you are helping forces that want to put themselves or some other institution above God, whether that's the whether that's the the true ever living God or whether that's creative God, it, it doesn't matter. You are still by saying there is no God, you are advancing that idea because then, like I said, it either comes down to to man or state. And we know man <laughs> is not very good. Uh, this is kind of how we got to, and that's that's the point that Carl Truman makes is is what we have now in this country and throughout the world is the chickens coming home to roost from from decades and decades of rampant self-worship of everybody um, basically creating their own God and, and worshiping their own needs and their own their own fleshly desires. And his point in the book that I'm halfway through is that it, it didn't just happen in the 1960s with the Cultural Revolution or the, the sexual revolution or the, the hippies and all that. It goes way far back to the Romantic era and has basically been two centuries worth building on each other and these left-wing um, communist and socialist uh, philosophers like Mark and Engels have have been helped and in, in, in aided by people like like Freud and like Nietzsche who have diminished the value of God so we've changed from an environment where the human um, they call it the imaginary changed from the fact that there are other forces in this world that are in charge of what happens to us ultimately as individuals, as humans. That's how we were for a few thousand years, um, uh, e even more than that. So, so Old Testament times up through, um, let's call it like the, the 11, 1200s, uh, the, the idea was that there is a force that is controlling our destiny and what happens on this earth, the climate, um, the, the natural events in that to a point now that's just in, in the last like 500 years or so that we are in charge of that, that we have, have all this control over um, our own destinies, uh, over the environment, over our climate, over our um, landscape. And some of that has proved to be true, but we have we have leapfrogged ahead of what the evidence we have for what we can control to assume that we have way more control than than we actually do, which has led to a um, I guess we'll call it a spiritual ignorance for lack of a better term. So that was uh, my experience is getting into that uh, um little debate and and i left it hanging i said you know uh i i don't like to go down a philosophical rabbit hole even though i went i went probably three feet down where you know usually I, i'd be tempted to go like a good another 12 15 feet but i said hey we'll we'll leave it here um if we meet at some sort of libertarian event i, th I think this guy's only in rochester i said let's let's sit down you know let's let's talk philosophy i'm i'm always happy to to go to the mats with these people. I think it's, I think it's fun and I think it's edifying and I think it's part of um, being an apologist and um, spreading the gospel because we might not, it, yeah, he might not see it that day, but you're, you're planting seeds. Anytime you can sit down and have that conversation with someone who, who proclaims to be an atheist, like I said, he might, he might get to that point in his life where um, God and the Holy Spirit just break him down enough to where his heart will be softened and uh, hopefully he'll come to repentance and salvation in Jesus Christ. So, uh, yeah, that was my, <laughs> not the highlight of my vacation, but just what was on my mind tonight. So thanks for joining me for another episode of Faith and Freedom. I'll see you next time.